Hey folks, we've had some requests to make some how to punch a pillow videos. So today I'm going to do my best to demonstrate how to make uh, this whale pillow designed by Sarah Howard. Uh, she'd done one for her kids and I really liked it. So uh, we're partnering with her to sell this as a pillow kit. So I punched the one side yesterday just so that uh, I could speak a little bit more clearly when we do the second side today, which, which will be punched in reverse of the first side. So what you need is, um, and we'll provide this with our kits when we sell them, is the proper yarn in the right lengths, uh, number 10 punch needle, some embroidery scissors, I keep a little tin for snipping all the end bits, which I later use for stuffing the pillow. And we highly recommend uh, gripper strip frame for this project. Um, you can punch most of it with only attaching it once, just the tail has to be reattached later. You could do it on a hoop, but it's, it's going to be harder to uh, um, keep it drawn tight. So we recommend the gripper strip frame for this. You know, any size that you have should work. All right, so I'll say goodbye and we'll start filming. We've got our pattern drawn on the monk's cloth. Uh, we've finished the edges for the most part with a blanket stitch. As you can see here, if you don't do that, monk's cloth frees a lot. So you want to have it about five inches longer than your frame so you can it nice and tight. So I want to get as much as I can in one pass. So I'm putting this the spout or the snout, what do we call that part? I guess the spout would have been there, close to the edge as possible. So to get it tight you want to pour, pull in the middle of each side as tight as you can and then you're going to start Pulling opposite, opposite. This is where you need the extra inches so it can grip onto those. Opposite, opposite. And once you feel you've got it pretty much in place, you're going to work on straightening your lines up so your pattern stays true to form. This is where a hoop makes it so much more difficult. On a large frame, you can see what you're doing. The good monk's cloth has these nice white lines, and that really helps you with the straightening. Punch needles are really forgiving, so you don't have to be perfect. But you still might as well start off giving yourself the best odds. All right, see you when we start punching. Now that we've got it onto the frame, you want to make sure it's drum tight, so that feels super secure. The lines are straight. I like to start punching with. Um, the outside border. So we're going to start with the blue and for the pillow because it's going to be used a lot. It's different than a wall hanging. Um, I like to work with longer pieces so I'm leaving it attached to the ball. If I'm doing a wall hanging or something with lots of colors I might cut myself little strands. Oh, I didn't show you how to thread your punch needle. So you just um, push your end from the opening side out, pull, glide down the shaft so it nests in there. Then you're just going to pull back and forth till it's loosely inside the inside the shaft. You want to make sure it's nice and loose so it's going to move on its own when you're punching and. Just leave a little tail. So 
I like to have as few strands as possible on a pillow. So that's why I'm starting on the outside here. I'm going to start at this beginner line on the fin. And we'll just push all the way down, lift up, all the way down, lift up, and it just glides along the top. Always move forward with the uh, sh shaft opening and always have your yarn trailing loose behind the end there. So here we're going to turn a corner, leave your punch needle in the fabric and just do a slight angle. I prefer using a frame that's not on a stand because when I punch upside down like this, it's really easy to turn. And you can punch in the opposite direction, but I tend to move my piece Now I go by feel rather than counting, but you can see that the stitches are pretty much the same size. It looks like I'm moving about two, two to three holes over. And that's just where it naturally, comfortably fits. If it's too far away, you'll get a huge stitch too close you'll have a harder time punching getting to a turn there so again we just turn the needle in the direction we're gonna punch pivot my frame around I like to rest it against a table Bend my knees so okay I'll come back when we switch to another color then Okay, so I got the first blue outline punched, stopped right at the edge of the frame. So we pull your needle up, trim it, and then you're just going to push it through to the front side. So most of you know for punch needle, we punch, uh, or at least for this pillow, we punch from the back to the front. So I usually wait till the end to trim these off, but just for demo, I'll, I'll trim them now, just flush with the, the loops. And then I keep these in a little tin and we'll use them to stuff the pillow later. So now what I wanna do is the black eye because the blue's gonna pass it. So we'll pull out the blue. Once again thread this needle. Uh, Fred pointed out that some of you may not know that the opening side I'm calling the shaft or the shaft opening. So then we thread the, thread the eye, line it up through the shaft and glide through. So this is a larger eye. So I'm going to start on the outside of it and it's pretty round. It's large enough so I'll be able to go around the whole outside. I'm going to kind of make a spiral. That took me seven punches to get to the outside, so now I'm going to spiral in. Looks like. Fifth punch. Doesn't 
matter if the eye pops out a little bit more, that might be nice. So let me trim that. Push the ends through. The end's a bit long. So I'm just pushing it through the hole that you started in. And that's what it looks like on this side. So we pull up the large end pieces and trim them. And then it'll get into a tighter eye shape once we add the blue. Okay, so for the next row of blue, I'm going to follow the outline. It's going to start a little, little bit above there. And I don't, don't want my stitches to stack, so I'm going to try my best to alternate them and change the size a little bit. So the first row was pretty tight, so I'm going to make the second row, make the stitches a little longer. shaft in the direction that you're traveling, the direction that you're punching. Now Fred, if you can do a close-up so you can, they can see the difference in the sit, stitch sizes. So we don't want them to stack like towers. We want them to lay more like bricks. So that's why I'm making the second row of stitches a little bit longer. It's not as critical on a piece with curved lines if you're doing uh, large straight areas. You would really notice it if your stitches stacked up. Here just do your best to alternate a little bit. Okay so to do the eye I choose to go around it one time with the blue. So just make a complete circle around it. And then because it's a pillow and I'm trying to minimize my ends and have as long of strands as possible. What I'll do is just punch each row up to the eye, end it, and start again on the other side of the eye. So I'll try and hurry and get there so you don't have to there with one long strand and then we'll start here okay so I got as much blue done in this uh, section as I could went pretty much as close to the bar as I could I, I wanted to shape the the fin a little bit so I'll do that later so here's the finished side I've got the trimming done so because it's a pillow and I want the borders as secure as possible, I'm going to punch from the outer edge again. So we'll start right up here, matching the as close as I can to the blue. Okay, so, okay, so I got that outer border done. I wanted as few colors to the edge as possible. So when we sew the both sides of the pillow together, um, there'll be le less things to line up. So next I'm gonna do this outer line of the gray. And when I'm 
done this line, the next one I'm going to do is going to be in the middle, and then I'll fill in the missing blanks. Okay, so I took that line and ran it down along there. Now that's just me. For a pillow, I want it really strong. And I also want the least waste and the least number of ends possible. So this time I'm running it right through the middle. And I'll get one nice strong line and then I'll fill in the gaps. I probably wouldn't have needed to do that here because it looks like I'm going to end up with full, two full lines anyway. So... So yeah, when I'm done that, I'll just fill these in so they'll just be a little bit, a little bit shorter. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with the white. Do the bottom line. And then I'll move to the upper line. And probably by the time I get down to the end there, I'll only need a single row. So this first row will go all the way to the end. And then when I punch this one, it'll end around here. Okay, so I got uh, pretty much as far as I can get to with this bar here. So we're going to take it off the frame. So we just kind of pull down and loosen one side. off. Already trimmed up the outside of the pillow. So to attach it, you just want to move it over so the unpunched parts in the middle of the frame or somewhere in the middle of the frame. I like I don't want my finished work to get frayed, so I'll hold it tight here and then pull. Yeah, that gives me enough room. Just making sure I don't get too close to the bar. That's a little close. Move that over another inch or two. Tight. Yep, got lots of room now. So, as soon as this is drum tight, then I'm going to continue with the gray, and then I'll outline the blue, and then I'll finish the inside pieces. So, I'm not going to show you that. I'll be back when it comes to uh, turning it into a pillow. Okay, so now you got to get brave. Uh, it's finished. Um, we're going to send you the pattern with a very tight stitch about a half an inch away from the edge. That's so when you trim, it's not going to fray. I mean, it'll still fray on this side, but you don't want it fraying on the punch side or all your loops will fall out. So here we go. Wish me luck. I'm still going to give myself A little bit of extra. All right, so just sharp scissors and trim on the outside of your stitches. Hey, okay, so we've got them all trimmed and you can see they're really curvy and starting to fray a little bit. So we want to press them. Um, some people suggest if you've got one of these clothes shavers, you can give it a quick Points over um, just to get the little fuzzies off but this isn't very fuzzy so I'm not going to worry about that. So to press it I've got my iron set on linen on the highest setting. Um, I'll only use steam later when I'm folding the monk's cloth in. For now what you want to do is get yourself a really uh, clean towel um, something that's going to hold a lot of water. And you're going to use that to press your punched piece nice and flat. Also makes it a little stronger. So you're going to press it on both sides. I 
tend to start with the reverse just in case there's something funky going on with the iron or the towel. So instead of ironing, you're pressing. So you're using the heat of your iron, holding it in place for about 15 seconds to just really flatten. that on both sides. So I'll shortcut it here for the video. You see it's already less curvy than there. Okay, that's nice and wet now. So we'll do the same thing with the front. And again, about 15 seconds per. I'm just steaming that water away and using all its might to make it nice and flat. See, it's nice, nice and flat. Not as important with the pillow, but it's easier to work with and it does stabilize your piece. So I'm gonna do that with both halves. For now though, I'm just going to show you how to prepare it for sewing. We're going to hand sew this piece. So we want to, and here we can use the steam. We want to iron the monk's cloth in towards the inside or the back side of the piece so that when we sew it, it won't be visible. So we're going to work all the way around. It's not critical to have it flat and perfectly ironed. What's critical is to have it pushed away from your loops. Your intention here is to make it easier to sew and to make sure it doesn't get seen from the front side of the we're back we got the ends ironed under again doesn't have to be perfect just away from the loops see we're gonna line them up this is a good point to tell if uh, you're lining up well it's hard to find any clips or pins big enough for this so I found one laundry pin that's big enough and then I found a snack clip I mean, it's going to stay together pretty good on its own, but it just helps prevent any mistakes. So in your kit, you're going to get one of these nice darning needles, um, good and sturdy, long length. Some people just do a single strand. We send you the really thick cotton, so single strand would be good enough, but I'm a little obsessed with having everything as secure as possible, so I double it. Give it a couple of thick knots at the end. And then you're just going to want to come up through to hide your knot. You're going to come up through the monk, underside of the monk's cloth so your knot will be hidden. And what we're going to do is called a ladder stitch. So, I mean, if you had a strong sewing machine, you could, you know, sew this on your sewing machine and then turn it inside out. But it's so thick and there's so many curves, I prefer hand sewing. So for a ladder stitch, it's an invisible stitch, they call it sometimes. So what you're going to do is go straight across like a ladder, as close to the yarn as you can. And then you're going to make yourself a short stitch underneath. So come up again as close as you can to the yarn. see that there 
but when we pull it tight, it'll disappear. So now we go straight across to this side, in through one layer of the monk's cloth, back up about a quarter of an inch away, and you see we're building a ladder. When I pull it tight, it disappears. So keep, I'll show you one more time. Straight across, in as close as you can to the wool loops. About a quarter of an inch stitch underneath the top layer of the monk's cloth. Pull up. your line going across and then head over to the other side straight across do the same thing underneath a quarter of an inch up see when I pull it secure we get a nice uh, everything disappears last time you saw our little friend here we started sewing with the blind stitch or the ladder stitch here at the snout. Come all the way around, got the tail done, and uh, yeah, you can't see the stitches. So I ran out of thread here, which is a good spot to stop, and uh, I thought I should start stuffing the tail before we close the opening too much. just because it would be too hard to get my hand way back there. I can put a bit more stuffing in just, just for fun. So I think I'll sew to about, just leave a spot big enough for my hand and then finish the stuffing. I don't want it all falling out. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, we're nearing the end here. So we've done the blind stitch all the way up. Just got to finish a few more stitches. Do our best to hide the hole and ignore the beeping on my phone. It's closed really nicely. If you do have any gaps, you can just take a regular thread and do a blind stitch to close up a few gaps as well. So there, that's nice and tight. And you can move the loops around a little bit. Where did that come from? That must have been the beginning thread. that under. Okay, so I don't want a big knot there, so I'm going to go under, and move it somewhere else. And just hide them underneath. Under somewhere else, pull it a little extra, trim, and then when you loosen up, it's all hiding under there. There you go. There's our pillow. I like the way the tail curls. I like to do some fuzzy.